Good morning and welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. We're trying to make sense of this crazy Arizona market and I'm kind of mixing up my showcase here with the new streaming platform that hopefully I've got better sound for everybody and we'll see how things go today. <laughs> and uh, we are off to the races. So we're going to talk today about a balanced market. What does it mean? Uh, I did have a question last week from a viewer that said, can you tell me what prices were last time we had a balanced market? Well, there's no connection. Um, you can have a average house price of $300,000 in a balanced market and average house price of $600,000 in a balanced market. So a balance just simply means that supply and demand are equal. 2021 supply was in short. I mean, there was nothing out there and there was intense demand. So it was not a balanced market. It was a seller's market. So today it's getting a little more balanced and we're going to go through some of the numbers. But first thing I want to share with you is what's going on now with our seven day moving average. And you can see here as expected Thanksgiving, it just plummets. Now this number as low as it is here, it's about 1600. Um, it was 1700 last year. So, you know, we went down by about a hundred homes under contract and that's it. I think the encouraging thing is as you're getting into December now, take a look at the gap between the number of new listings and the number of contracts. It went from like 62% to 80% of the homes going under contract. And the reason I bring that up is it's not a bad time to list a home. It's you have less competition, uh, but they're moving. Um, so if you're thinking you want to wait till January, um, I would not kick December to the curb. Uh, December is not a bad time to put a home in the market. Yes, there are fewer buyers, but you can see that 80% of new listings last week went under contract. Kind of a bizarro world, right? So here we are. If we're going to take a look at the Cromford Market Index, CMI, it shows that Chandler's down 7%, not prices, but the Cromford Market Index is down 7%, but they're still sitting at 164.1. Anything over 110 is considered... Uh, seller's market, anything below 100 is considered a buyer's market. So what does that mean? Well, let's take a look at Chandler's median price here right now. Let me get rid of all these other cities here and show you what's going on with Chandler. And I get this thing to cooperate here a little bit. There we go. And you'll see they've got a higher CMI and their prices are going up. We did have the big dump right here after mortgage rates went from 3.5 to seven and now they're still still climbing so if we go back and look at fountain hills with a cmi of 155 which is a seller's market let's take a look and see what's going on in fountain hills and it is pretty much a higher end market and they're kind of boy they have some wild swings up and up and down but their average is seven hundred fifty one thousand five hundred dollars so they're they're doing pretty good out there as a seller's market uh gilbert's about the same as Chandler. So I'm going to skip that. Now here's Scottsdale rocking and rolling about 117, almost right at the balanced market. So let's see what we're seeing in Scottsdale. And let's see, it's going there. There we are. What's going on with their pricing? You can see that it has gone up a little bit, but it's been pretty level. Um, everybody has gone up the past few weeks. It's kind of interesting to watch. Now let's get down into the Buyer's market, Maricopa, the places that have most of the new construction. And we're down here in Maricopa at 71.9. And if I pull up Maricopa over here, we're going to see that it is, here we go. See how it's kind of flat going down a little bit. So the buyer's market, better opportunity, better prices for you, less, more comp, less competition. Buckeye, the lowest, 67.5. Let's see what's going on with Buckeye, shall we? And, uh, Hey, hit me up in the chat. If you're on here, it's the first time I've used this to see if the chat works. Just, uh, put in the word. Yes. Uh, I'm here and let me see if it's, uh, if it's kicking anybody in, I'm not seeing anything show up here yet. Um, okay. Same situation. See when you're in that buyer's market prices kind of stay level and let's see, I'm going to put a chat overlay here and see if anything happens. Nope. Nothing there. Um, there we go. Danila, thank you. Thank you for doing that. Um, here's the interesting thing, folks, because I'm hearing things like, you know, the house down the street is, uh, um, you know, they discounted by 10, 20, 30,000 dollars. 
so you're you're getting the impression that real estate is really falling off the face of the earth. Thank you, Mark. And uh, he said sin. He meant to say C. So, <laughs> so, but look at this. This is our sales price to list ratio. It's sitting here. I hate that chart. Uh, pull up the one I wanted here. 97.7%. That means less than 3% of the homes are getting their, not getting their list price. In comparison, we're at pre-pandemic levels. So we got up here in the silly season, 2021 and May of 2022. And now we're back down to 97.7. It feels like it's so much worse, but it really isn't. Now, there are some things to take into consideration there when we look at a chart like this. Because you weren't seeing in pre-pandemic uh, times there was the percentage of seller concessions. And I'm going to show you that here right now. We are sitting at 43%. Now, the shocker on this is the average median concession is $9,500. If we go back to a similar percentage of homes offering seller closing costs and concessions, um, back to 2017, the concessions were half that, about 4,600. So while the percentage has gone up a little bit, the amount has really escalated. Well, why is that? Well, the problem is if you're going to compete with builders, you better be throwing something on the table and, uh, and offering some concessions. The buyers are expecting it right now. They're expecting you to contribute towards their closing costs. They're helping them with the rate buy down, just like the builders are. But the builders are doing it on huge scale, like 50 grand. We see here, this is the number of price changes per week. They plummeted because nobody bothered to make any adjustments on their homes over the Thanksgiving holiday. So it again is showing us that this is not a bad time to list your home if you're thinking of selling. Just make sure you price it right. Now, all eyes are on January. What's going to happen with rates? Are we going to, going to see a flood of new inventory? Um, I think it's going to be more of the same. Now, the chart that I showed you, seven-day moving average, all, all those metrics are going to climb. So we're going to see more new listings come on. We always do in January. In fact, January and June are our two peak months for new listings. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen this year. I think we're going to see more, but I don't think it's going to explode. And I don't see interest rates moving. There is another Fed meeting in December. The traders have a 90% probability that they're just going to stay put. But there's still so much pressure on mortgage rates, and it's driven by the country's debt. When they got rid of the budget ceiling, uh, they started spending like drunken sailors. We amassed $2 trillion in debt, more debt in six months than we have amassed in 100 years. Think about that. Well, that debt has to be financed, and it's financed by the treasury market. We have a flood of treasuries. When you flood the market with treasuries, rates go up, and that's what's happening. So we were expecting rates to start to come down this year. Even Mortgage Bankers Association said 6.1 by the end of the year. Doesn't look like we're even going to be close. I think we're going to muddle and stay right where we're at. That's certainly what it looks like. And it, uh, so I don't see any big changes coming in January. Now, I could be surprised, but I'd be shocked if all of a sudden there was a rate reduction in January. The other thing that concerns me, and I showed a chart uh, last week or the week before showing how much spending, the relationship between the Treasury and the government spending money and then inflation. And you can see three areas where the spending spiked up, and then you look, and inflation spiked up a year to 18 months later. And then when spending went down, inflation came down. If you look at Q3, though, spending went right back up again. Well, that money is starting to make its way into the system. I think, and I'm just spitballing here, that the inflation numbers that come out in February and March are not going to continue to go down. They hit 3.2. I think they're going to spike up a little bit. If that happens, be prepared that the central bank may put the brakes on a little harder than they are right now. And it's just, I'm just going off that one little caveat of how much money is being spent and every time we've seen a spike in the money hitting the markets and hitting our economy, we see too much money chasing too few goods. And that's what we're looking at. Hey, I'm going to show you something here real quick. My son, as you know, is an animator. And uh, 
he made a page here. He's selling Christmas ornaments. <laughs> I got the link below. So take a look at it. He's got a LP ornament, that hot dog guy. Um, he's got, these are little clay ornaments that he makes that he's selling on his site there. So take a peek at that. I told him I'd, I'd push it out there for him as my early Christmas present to him. I haven't had time to go out and go shopping for coal yet. So I'm actually going out and seeing him next week. I'm going to go to California. I'm going to brave the freeway. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, if you have any questions, shoot me an email at rick at rickhelps.com and have a fabulous Monday and take on the rest of the week. Take care.